Hello again, Brian King here. I was reflecting on the way people frame the difficulties in their lives. There are all kinds of different words that you can use. Some people say, well, I don't have problems. I see challenges. Or I don't have problems. I have opportunities. And they reframe it. I can see people starting to join in. That's awesome. Say hi, give me a love. Comment below so I know that you're here. And in terms of the language people use, and I've talked about this before, our language determines the options that we have available to us. Is it something that's happening to us? Is it something that's happening for us? You know, is, is it a, if it's a problem, if it's an obstacle? The, the kind of language you use not only determines your options, it determines the emotional state that you have coming into it. It determines the relationship that you decide you have with it. Is your relationship competitive? You know, I have this problem, I have this obstacle, I need to fight, I need to push, I need to win. And so much of just the simple language you use determines your thoughts, your emotions, your, your physiology, the entire you that you become when you step into it. But those who know me know that my life is very reflective, you know, very investigative. I'm very curious. I have a, a lot of questions. I want to learn things. So based on that, what I'm about to say shouldn't surprise you. And that is, I've come to a point in my life where I no longer believe I have problems, challenges, or obstacles, or even disabilities for that matter. What I believe is that I have teachers. That's what I call all of them. They're all teachers. If something works, hey, something very important for me to learn there. There are duplicatable decisions, resources that I used, that if I use them in the exact form or close to it moving forward, I will likely get those good results again. And if something steps right up and kicks me square between the eyes, I can say, hmm, all right, you've got my attention, teacher. What is it you want me to learn? And it's important to think in terms of maybe the relationship you had uh, with teachers throughout your life. Hey, Kathy, how's it going? Let's say it was a grade school teacher. One teacher really looked after you, protected you, saw something special in you. Then there was the other teacher who did nothing but scream, shouted, was impatient, criticized you in front of the, the rest of the class. You can look back and say, hmm, okay, teacher, what did you have in store for me? What did you want me to learn from that? What did I learn as a second grader or as a seventh grader? And what can I learn going back? Hey, Lori, now if I look back as the 47-year-old me, now what do I see from it? Do I, see, do I still see it through the lens of a frightened child? Or do I see it with greater perspective? There's classes that I continue to look back on. I loved my culture anthropology class. I loved my criminal justice class. I look back and reference it frequently. I remember when I learned this. I remember when I, I learned that. And it's not living in the past to do that. It's looking for the lessons and the treasures and bringing them forward. Just like any mentor, any book that you've ever read by an author that's no longer with us. Say, oh, I remember when I read that book, this wonderful quote or this wonderful insight. I do that with my cancer experience. One of my greatest teachers. So saying that I you know, survived cancer makes about as much sense as saying, man, I survived math class. That's social studies. Man, almost kicked my ass. I survived it. You know, maybe you do say that. <laughs> you know, there are some... Math is not my forte. Algebra especially felt like, mm, I don't know, public root canal. It, it was not very entertaining. It was hard. I, I'm not a math guy. But I can look back and say, oh, I survived algebra. Oh, my God. Or I can look at it and say, hmm, what did I learn? What was I taught by algebra? I was taught to delegate math because somebody else is better at it than me. 
And when you look at them as teachers, it's very difficult to see yourself as a victim. I don't know the last time I saw this. A kid throwing up his arms in the air and bawling uncontrollably saying, Homework again? Why me? Why does this always happen to me? Doesn't happen. Because you don't do that in the presence of a teacher. You do that in the presence of something that was done to you, this crime, this horrible thing. Now, I'm not minimizing the emotional impact that serious events happen. Losing a loved one, losing a child, a, a life-threatening illness. There are things out there that can kick us and kick us down hard. But what I'm saying to you is that it's helpful to choose a lens to look at it through that allows you to realize that you have a relationship with this event that allows it to instruct you on how to grow because of that relationship. As opposed to feeling, well, it's just another opportunity for the universe to stick it to me, to kick me in the ass, show me that, you know, life has it out for me, God hates me, you know, however it is you want to frame it. Why on earth would you want to look at it that way? When you can look at it saying, ah, oh, another lesson. I'm still pretty wiped out from the last one, but you know what? This teacher showed up, it's the first day of class, and I better get to it and figure out what am I being shown here? What are the, the lessons, the lessons plans, the worksheets, whatever it is? And you know how you sometimes do group assignments? Well, I better rally my team around me, of uh, my trusted advisors, because I need to get some feedback on this assignment. I'm not quite sure how to approach it because I'm going to have to write some kind of a paper, some kind of an essay, which is the equivalent of the story that we tell ourselves about what it all means. So I gather people around me and my friend, you know, Kathy, who chimed in here, she's one of my go-to people, you know, one of my uh, closest and dearest friends. And I will rally my people and say, hey, man, can, can I run this by you? you know, this, there's this thing that I've been given, you know, this, this assignment. And I'm not quite sure how to tackle it. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I'm not even sure I understand the teacher's instructions. So if you could help me kick this around a little bit and figure out a plan for how I'm going to do it, outline it, what are the specific things I'm going to put, how am I going to start? You know, at the end of this, what's my conclusion going to be? So writing a paper is very much like creating a plan. Creating your plan. Where are you going to start? What main things do you want to make sure happen as you're writing this paper? What main action steps? And when it's done and over, how will you know it? Where will you have arrived? What will you have accomplished? And then you can look back and reflect upon those main points, those lessons, the things that were extracted from that assignment you've been given. I My life has really been punctuated by a lot of health issues. And there have been times where I really got stuck in that, you know, what was me? I, I This really sucks. Why did this happen? I'm tired of one more thing, one more thing. Just when I thought I got a handle on all my health issues, one more thing. And I've shed a lot of tears over that, too. And I see the struggles my kids have with their Asperger's and their ADHD. The struggle that my clients have some really hard stuff. And if I feel sorry for them, not only is that insulting for them and doubting their capacity of being proactive, because when you feel sorry for somebody, you see them as a victim. But when you see them as somebody that's received a lesson, my main question to everybody these days is, how can I help you? Tell me how I can help you. Not is there anything I can do? Or tell me if I can help you. There's no if, there's no maybe. I'm showing up and I'm asking, how can I help you? Give me something to help with. And some people pass it up and that's fine. Either they don't want the help from me, they don't want the help at all, whatever it is. But I make sure I show up because I realize that although it may seem on the surface that this lesson from this teacher has been given to one person, we are all students. We are all in class together. 
whether we were there when the assignment was handed out, because some of us come a little late, some of us have some catching up to do, some of us may even be a little bit ahead, but we're all students. We can help each other with assignments. We can be tutors. Hey, I went through that class. I remember that teacher. Man, she's a real bitch, but she's a good teacher. I can help you with that lesson. So this is kind of my take on all that. I don't have difficulties, obstacles, problems. I have teachers. And teachers give us lessons that help us grow, not to defeat us, not to rob us of things. So I want to offer that to you, that reframe, that metaphor. And by some of the comments, Mitch, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Jackie, Kathy, I'm so grateful that you decided to join me for this wonderful conversation and, and giving me your, your input. It means a lot to me. And continue the conversation, please. Because you know, I know this kind of thinking might be unfamiliar to some folks, and I hope it's helpful. If there are other things you want me to talk about, by all means, suggest it. I'm happy to give you what it is you need, because I'm here to help you. If you have any more private questions you want to discuss, send me a private message. And if there's anybody in your life that's having some difficulty right now, that seems to be stuck in that idea that, oh, I have all these problems, it's so unfair, why does this always happen to me? Please share this with them. I'm so glad this was helpful for you, Kathy. In fact, you know, let's, let's talk later and check in. Share this with those who really need it. In fact, answer this question. Who do you know that you can share this video with right now who could benefit from this message? So until next time, I'm Brian King. It's been a pleasure. We'll talk to you again soon.